All right. This is a pretty special moment. I have observed here at my blacklight setup here in Portland on May 7th, 2019, that a Columbia, like the Columbia River here, silk moth, Columbia silk moth, has been attracted to my blacklight setup here tonight. And what's really great is that, see those thin antennae? She, she is a female, and those there are eggs. She's already laying eggs. I'm going to show you what we typically do when we find a female silk moth like this. And this is the first one I've ever personally found, by the way. So I'm particularly excited about it. I'm going to do all of this with one hand, by the way, since I'm holding the camera. Brown paper bag. Stapler. That's all you really need. I'm going to very gently pick her up. We're going to take a look at her. See how thick her abdomen is. Oh, she's so full of eggs. I'm going to gently put her in this paper bag. Hope that we get a nice look at her open wings. See those beautiful silk moth colors? This is our western version of the Cecropia moth, Hyalophora Cecropia. These share the same genus with them. And look at those beautiful eye spots on the wings. Looks a little bit like the exotic atlas moth, which get much larger. But if you see the wing margin there, almost has that sort of same snake-like pattern going up the edge with a snake's eye right there. And the females, of course, have thinner antennae. This one's antennae are a bit damaged with how full she is of eggs. And the fact that she's depositing some here right next to the black light already is a possible sign that she's a little older. And that might explain some of the damage there in her antennae. I'm going to drop these five eggs of hers. Let's take the zoom off there. Five eggs of hers into the paper bag with her. They are going to be collected by myself here in a few days. There goes another moth. And uh, after she's laid a bunch more, and then going to hatch them out and feed the baby caterpillars and raise them up. Some kind of noctuid moth there. Beautiful. And then, just over here, a day flying moth. Beautiful black and white colors. I see them flying during the day along with another species that's paler called the white ribbon carpet. A few other moths. Let's see here tonight. Oh, where did you go? There you are. I didn't actually see this one until just now. The wing structure on this particular one here, I think it's called a lappet moth. I've known the names of all of these things really well at one time or another, but you tend to forget things as time goes on. But look at the beautiful wing structure of that moth. 
those undulating curves on both the top and bottom sections. Something else hanging out right there, right next to it. This one's about that big. Going a little bit more. Sort of a tent-shaped body. Let's see if there's anything else out here. Other little moths. That looks like a little snout moth, perhaps. A little bit on the drab side for me to ever have learned what it is. Well, she's not flying away because she's got a job to do now. And so what I'm going to do at this point is close up her bag. I'm going to fold the edge over. And then I'm going to staple it. Proving to be a little more difficult with one hand. Staple and staple. That's all there is to it. So I'll check on that again in a couple days. And there will be lots more eggs in there to hatch out and then I'm going to research again for the first time in a while what the species eats and find that food plant and feed those babies up. Hear the creek in the background and the frogs croaking very beautiful night. We've had good weather all week here in the Portland, Oregon area. Unseasonably warm temperatures. Might hit 80 degrees here the next few days in early May. That almost never happens, but it's been very favorable for me tonight. Finding that very special moth. Oh, the tips of her wings yeah. have gotten... Her antennae are broken, too. ...beat up just a little bit. Yeah, those were like that the other day. She has deposited quite a few more eggs. I had initially put, I think, five in here. Alright, so what are they? On the sides? <laughs> I don't know yet, but there's going to be lots of caterpillars. I'm sorry. She doesn't hold on as well. No. She's so full of eggs. Oh, I saw something very interesting on the tip of her abdomen. It's kind of shiny. Yeah. I don't know. If, is that not normal? I don't know. I just had her at an angle yeah. for just a moment. I saw it. Come here. It looks just kind of like a bald spot. I don't know what that means. She's been real busy with it, rubbing it up against everything. Oh. Perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the red in this species. It's so amazing. And I thought they were Columbia silk moths, but now I think it's Hyalophora urealis, the Ceanothus. But there's a lot of overlap, apparently, in the range oh. between the two and some blends, some... Um, hybrids between the two species and then there's subspecies mm -hmm. and then there's like one maybe called Castloensis or something that has um, I don't know it's its own like not even a subspecies yeah. <laughs> it's below that even mm. so apparently they interbreed that's interesting not a bad moth for Oregon though yay I was just oh. sitting there at my black light the other night it's like what <laughs> <laughs> First one I've ever personally collected. I've had a few other ones in the past. Well, you were there for one of them, I think. We hatched out the eggs. But no, that was um, that it. was Polyphemus. Yeah, that was Polyphemus. I think I had one the prior year that Tommy had brought me. Mm. He had found somewhere. But that may have been 
three years ago and not two, actually. 